So cancel culture is a dress rehearsal for mass murder. I'll be very clear. Cancel culture is a dress rehearsal for mass murder. They're seeing if people can be disappeared from social media. And if people accept people being disappeared from social media, then they will accept people being disappeared from the world. When communists get into power, when socialists get into power, they kill us. No kidding, no fooling, and our families are lucky to get away. Yeah, yeah, it's a great leap forward off a cliff. Cancel culture is a dress rehearsal for extermination. Yeah, listen, they call it character assassination because it's a rehearsal, right? It's a rehearsal. And the kind of lies that are told about me uh, in the mainstream media, in uh, Wikipedia and, and other places, are very specifically designed to get crazy people to target me in a violent manner. It's, it's an incitement to, to violence, right? Because they portray me as uh, such an evil person that's the old, would you shoot Hitler if you, as a baby, or whatever it is, right? So uh, yes, it is a sociopathic dress rehearsal for extermination. And it's very, very serious stuff because we want to push back while it's still in the form of language rather than wait until it's guys kicking in your door at 3 o'clock in the morning and, and everybody vanishing. So, yeah, cancel culture is, well, first of all, it's the opposite of culture. See, culture is when you disagree. Otherwise, it's a cult. It's just the first syllable, cult, not culture, right? So culture is when we disagree. And we are allowed to disagree because that's what culture is. Uh, it's just conformity. Otherwise, it's just like ants in a row. It's nothing, right? So when you silence people you disagree with, that's the opposite of culture. That's stagnation. That's decay. And it, there's a murderousness to it. There's a murderousness to it. But they're changing the definition of the words. They're changing the definition of fascism. The fascism is to violently push someone back from not agreeing with them, but now they're changing it to be labeled to people that pro free speech. Yeah, well, of course, yeah, of course. So what, what they do, yeah, what they do is they, uh, they, will, um, they will charge up words with such negative connotations that when they then attach those words to people, it's like that laser painting for an airstrike, right? So, so that's, they, they want to charge up like words like racism, white nationalist, white supremacist, uh, uh, fascist, Nazi. They charge these words, and listen, some of these words have negative connotations for good reason and all that, but they charge these words up to the point where it overwhelms the mob's capacity for reason, and it, it, it creates such a level of hatred against those words that then when they attach those words to people, it's designed to call in violence, which is what I've sort of been facing, right? I mean, I can't, it's, that's why it's nice to come out here with, with you lovely people because, you know, I go out to other places and, you know, people are attacking the venues. There are bomb threats, uh, death threats. Uh, they call 911. The police don't even show. I mean, this state of nature out there. For, for free thinkers at the moment. So this is, this is a nice break from the studio. What do you do with them changing the definition of racism? I mean, I'm reading now things like, like that in colleges that African-American students can't even comprehend that being biased towards Caucasians is a form of racism. Like, are we not a race? <laughs> well, see, now race is very clearly defined when it's time for affirmative action. But when whites say, well, we're a race and we have race interest, well, who knows what being white is? It's like, I don't remember that confusion when the term white privilege was. Nobody said, well, you can't talk about white privilege because white is so undefined. It's like, no, white privilege, right? But uh, yeah, when then whites say, well, you know, we're our race and we may have particular considerations, particularly when, you know, there's lots of negative views of whites being pumped out there through the academia and so on. Suddenly white is this amorphous thing that you can't possibly define. You can see Jared Taylor gets hit with these kinds of things as well, right? I mean, as far as just you have to stand up and speak the truth, you know? I mean, the alternative to standing up is a disaster beyond what we can imagine. And understand, too, that the, so the word racism, it's largely invented and deployed by communists in order to sow divisions between the races, right? So we have people of different races here. We're going to have a pleasant and rational conversation, and I don't care about your race, and you shouldn't care about mine. It doesn't matter, right? But if people can come in and say, ah, well, you see, you have to hate me because of privilege, and I have to hate you because of this, and we have something, we don't have this in common, and we don't have that in common. If they can sow these kinds of divisions, they can create civil war, and they can say, hey, man, capitalism failed. <laughs> you know, which is like, you know, it's like, like poisoning your wife and saying, well, I guess she just didn't work out. Now, did she? <laughs> A couple of more crunches, she'd have been fine, right? 
Uh, so it's, you know, a multiracial society to me, you know, it's fine. But if a multiracial society is then has sows of hostility and hatred and division sown in, then we're doomed. We're doomed. And it's, you know, that's why I, I push back against this term. There are racists out there for sure, but it should be very sparingly applied. You know, this spray of everyone with racism, it devalues the word, which is an important word, because there are some people out there who are, are racist.